potato planters like this one could have been pulled by two horses. It's most likely that horse operated planters would have only planted one drill at a time. The gearing mechanism is powered by a spiked wheel running along the bottom of the drill. As the wheel turns, it drives a chain pulley, which in turn drives the two revolving cylinders. The men simply place the potato seed into the slots, and when the wheel comes to a certain point, the seed is dropped down into the drill and is covered by the drill ploughs. The manufacturers claimed that this planter was capable of planting more than six acres in a day, but in reality four acres was considered a good day's work. Alex bought this machine from Sam Davidson, a big potato grower from Cookstown. The tractor is a 1957 Ferguson 35, owned and driven by Eamon Mullen from Castle Caulfield. The men feeding the planter are Dan McFerrin and Jackie Robinson. When the machine was in its prime, the wages for a farm labourer was about one pound a day. An even older planting machine is this one, which gets the seed into the ground by means of a conveyor belt on each side. The men place the seed onto slots on the belt, which carries them along and drops them into the bottom of the drill, where they are covered by the drill ploughs. Like the previous machine, the power to drive the belt comes from a wheel running along the bottom of the drill. The two planters sat on a wooden bench and used the ploughs as footrests. Unlike modern machines, there was no shelter from the elements, and bearing in mind that early potatoes could have been planted in March, this was usually a cold job. The men feeding the planter are John McCann and Jody Casey. The tractor is Kenny McGowan's 1954 TE20 diesel. This old potato planting machine was bought in England, and Alex thinks that it may be the only one of its kind working in Ireland. In order to operate effectively, these machines needed the ground dry and in good conditions could have planted three or four acres in a day. Although it was the 1950s before planting machines began to appear here, it is likely that they were working in England and certainly in America before the Second World War. By far the most popular potato dropper from bygone days was the bell dropper, another of Harry Ferguson's ingenious labour-saving devices. The men by this time had seats to sit on as they worked, perhaps a little more comfortable, but on a cold day they were certainly no warmer. No revolving cylinder or conveyor belt was required with this dropper. You simply dropped the seat which fell down a tube into the bottom of the drill. When to drop the seat was determined by a bell attached to a wheel and with a ring which could be heard half a mile away. The wheel had several settings which meant that the seat could be set at different distances apart. It's well known that if you wanted big potatoes then seeds should be set at least a foot or 30 centimetres apart and if you were growing seed potatoes then the settings would be only half of that. The tractor, a TE20, belongs to the driver, Mick Cush. The seed bin could hold a quarter of a tonne of seed, and in a long day it was possible to plant six acres. <laughs>